Welcome back to part 2 of this brief introductory video on the minor bupleurum decoction, or Xiao Chai Hu Tang. We will continue to review the Xiaoyang harmonizing aspects of Xiao Chai Hu Tang by studying the herb Ban Xia. Ban Xia is Pinellia rhizome. Its name probably refers to the fact that it is harvested in the middle of the summer. It is acrid and warm, and it is toxic in its raw form. To be used internally, it has to be processed with either ginger, or more often with licorice, in which case it is called zhe ban xia. The processed form is always used by default. Ban xia is associated with lungs, spleen and stomach. You will remember that the lungs are associated with the acrid taste in the five transformation theory. The characteristics of ban xia are that it dries dampness and transforms phlegm. It down bears counterflow and checks vomiting and it disperses glomus and knots. As it is warming and drying, it should only be used for greasy coughs and should be avoided for dry coughs. It should be used with care if the patient uses barbiturates. Ban Xia and Huang Qin can be seen as paired herbs. Ban Xia frees and opens the flow of qi. It treats rebellious stomach qi and it is used for thin phlegm and dampness. Wang Qin descends and drains turbid yin. It cools heat from the liver and gallbladder. Together they harmonize the lungs and stomach to stop vomiting. They treat thin phlegm and dampness and clear heat and drain fire. Shengjiang is fresh ginger rhizome. It is acrid and slightly warm. And again we can note that five transformation theory associates its acrid property with the lungs in addition to its association with the spleen and stomach. Its characteristics are that it resolves the exterior and disperses cold. It warms the center to stop vomiting, transforms phlegm and relieves coughing, and it can be used to treat seafood poisoning. It should be avoided when there is spontaneous sweating or when there is abundant heat. Ban Xia and Shengjiang are seen as another important harmonizing pair. In Xiao Chai Hu Tang, Ban Xia is said to direct qi counterflow downwards. This allows it to treat vomiting due to phlegm accumulation in the stomach. Shengjiang treats vomiting caused by cold in the stomach, by warming the lungs and draining dampness accumulated in the stomach. These two herbs have similar properties and act on the same channels. They settle nausea and vomiting by harmonizing and correcting qi flow in the stomach. And incidentally, Shengjiang also helps reduce the toxicity of Ban Xia. Renshen is ginseng root, probably the most famous and perhaps the most misunderstood Chinese herb. It is sweet, slightly bitter and slightly warm, and is associated with the lungs and the spleen. The five transformation theory links its sweet nature with the spleen. Ginseng's dramatic properties make it seem an unusual choice for a harmonizing formula. It is said to powerfully tonify yuan or primordial qi, restoring a pulse which may be on the verge of expiring. It supplements the spleen and boosts the lungs, and promotes fluids and nourishes the blood. It calms the spirit and sharpens the mind. Although Renshen is described as only being slightly warm, it encourages internal fire. I personally find that it has an agitating effect. You should avoid taking coffee and other stimulants when you use Renshen, and long-term use can lead to hypertension. It has also been observed to potentially contribute to the retention of a pathogen, so a priority should be to remove the pathogen before Renshen is prescribed. When we look at Chai Hu and Renshen as harmonizing herbs, it can be said that Chai Hu acts to prevent Renshen from strengthening pathogens, while Renshen prevents the dispersing effect of Chai Hu from damaging Yuan or primordial Qi. The Su Wen describes Da Zhao as a fruit relating to the earth. Da Zhao is Chinese date or jujube. It is sweet and warm. It is associated with the spleen and stomach channels. Da Zhao has many enriching characteristics. It tonifies the center, benefits qi, nourishes blood, enriches yin, benefits the essence, 
replenishes the marrow, harmonizes the spleen, and generates fluids. With these characteristics, you'll have to be careful if the patient shows symptoms of heat from excess, phlegm heat, and any situation with dampness and qi stagnation. Sheng Jiang and Da Zhao are used together with Gan Cao in many famous formulas, including Kui Zhi Tang and Bu Zhong Yi Qi Tang. According to Wang Ang, a 17th century physician, the stomach is the source of the protective, the spleen the root of the nutritive. The protective is yang, and acrid is necessary to benefit it. The nutritive is yin, and sweetness is necessary to tonify it. When acrid and sweet are combined, the spleen and the stomach are strengthened, and the nutritive and protective flow unhindered. According to Zhou Yan, Sheng Jiang is acrid and yellow, and enters the protective level by Yang Ming. Da Zhao is sweet and red, and enters the nutritive level by the Tai Yin. It can enter the nutritive level because within its sweetness is acridity, yet its sweet conserving quality is greater. Only when combined with Sheng Jiang is this no longer excessive. Sheng Jiang's acrid unblocking strength is greater, and only when combined with Da Zhao is it not excessively unblocking. This is the reason this two-herb combination is a prime harmonizing formula for nutritive and protective qi. An interesting observation can be made when we look at the two pairs, Chai Hu and Huang Qin, and Ren Shen and Da Zhao. The two pairs complement each other in terms of taste. Chai Hu and Huang Qin are both bitter, while Ren Shen and Da Zhao are both sweet. And when we look at their nature or temperature, we can note that Chai Hu and Huang Qin are both on the colder part of the spectrum, while Ren Shen and Da Zhao are both warming. Gan Cao is licorice root. It is used both in its raw state and prepared in honey. The properties shown here are for honey prepared licorice root, or Zhe Gan Cao. It is sweet and warm and associated with the heart, lungs, spleen and stomach channels. It tonifies the spleen and boosts qi, clears heat, resolves toxins, relaxes tension, relieves pain, and harmonizes the characteristics of herbs used in a formula. Although it should be used with care where there is distension or overabundant dampness, it is most commonly used in its capacity as a harmonizing herb for the constituents of many formulas. Following are some of the counterindications in prescribing Xiao Chai Hu Tang. Because of the properties of Chai Hu and Huang Qin, the formula should not be used in cases where there is excess above and deficiency below. The ascending nature of Chai Hu in this formula can injure Qi, possibly causing dizziness, headache, or gum bleeding over a period of time. Although closely associated with liver problems, there are many liver issues that can be aggravated by Xiao Chai Hu Tang so it is imperative that it should be used correctly. This has mainly been a theoretical or textbook presentation of Xiao Chai Hu Tang, which should help you in memorizing the formula. I hope you'll join me for part 3, where I will look at some of the more practical aspects of prescribing Xiao Chai Hu Tang. <laughs>